Waters with your host, Bud Levitt. Where's this little pond? You think I'm going to give you that secret? No, we're on the air. I mean, he's, he wants to know where that casting was done. This, this, I'm not going to tell you that. Yeah, it's, worth, it's worth a try, Bud. Oh, well, you tried right there, right on live, too. You can, you can well, we got a full canoe tonight, and that is a good, if it's a good Indian sized canoe, a Restigoose sized canoe. Jane Cleves is here. How are you, dear? Very good. Have a good summer? Yeah, great caught, summer. Caught a lot of fish? No, but I had a great summer. You did? Yeah. Bill Townsend is here, who heads up the Atlantic Salmon Association, the Federation, one of three national representatives. And Bill, how about you? Well, I had a great summer. I caught as many salmon as I've ever caught. This really? Yeah. Tell us just a little more. I've got to get back to that. Well, the, uh, the first and, and uh, perhaps the most exciting was uh, on the fourth cast on the Penobscot on opening day. Oh, I remember and, that. And, I remember uh, that. That was very pleasing. All the rest I got in Canada, but I, I, had, uh, I had... This wasn't your first Penobscot River fish. Oh, no. Oh, no. No, no. But the first on the fourth cast you got Fourth cast opening day. I hey, gave Jane the fly afterwards, and she got a couple of fish on I it. I caught two fish on the same fly. On the same fly? The same fly before I lost it. Well, John, now that you tried to get my secret pool, <laughs> this is John Swan, an artist of the year in Maine, and a man that I'd never met until this program this evening, and a man that I've admired. His work is uh, absolutely dynamite. Uh, thanks, We're going to talk tonight uh, about a lot of things. We're going to talk to John first on uh, painting, uh, how he ever got into this, where he came from, and tell me, where were you a boy? I was a boy in Portland, Maine. Always a Portlander? Always a Portlander. Really? Portland and Rangeley. I always spend my summers in Rangeley. So uh, that's where I got my, uh, my love of fly fishing. When did you go to the brushes and the ink? Uh, out of college and I didn't have any money. <laughs> really? <laughs> I thought it'd be easier than working. But it wasn't. <laughs> you better for <laughs> No, I, uh, when I was uh, first married, I thought I'd take up, I like to paint. I thought I might be able to pick up a few bucks on weekends or something, and uh, that's what started it. Do you remember your first painting? Uh, first one I sold, I remember. Do you? Mm -hmm. How good was it? Fantastic. Was it? It was the pits. Yeah. 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 They always say it was the worst <laughs> thing I ever saw. If I could get it back, I'd grab it. Oh, if I had lots of money, I'd buy all those old paintings back. You know, i just bury them or something. It's, uh, what year was this? Oh, 74, 75. It was a, uh, a little uh, this barn I always admired, which is gone now. And I drove by it every day in the wintertime. And I, I s asked the people if I could paint their barn. And I remember sitting along the edge of the road for three or four days in a row, painting their barn. And I had the painting for, oh, a month or two, and God, we needed money. And so I said, geez, these people didn't have any money either. But I went over to their house and knocked on the door. And, you know, you want to buy a painting? You know, you want to buy that painting? And they said, yeah, we'll give you 50 bucks. Great, 50 bucks. It was great. It was my first sale. Really? Yeah. What year was this now? In 75. In 75. Well, you've come a long way since. Well, maybe, maybe, maybe not. Oh, boy. <laughs> it's hard to this tell. This shot right over Bill's head. Give us a look at this. Tell me about this picture. This is a painting uh, of Kenny Bagel Lake where I... I grew up with my grandparents, and we have a, a place there now. That's a, a typical sunset. <clears throat> the rain, the rain clouds are clearing off the mountain, and uh, a couple of fellows are out in the canoe and just uh, casting for trout. Well, we had the wrong picture then. We got the uh, we were doing the ice out picture at that time. <laughs> so, uh, well, imagine uh, a couple of guys there. Well, well, I know it, and that ice out. It, uh, but <laughs> all right, this is your ice out shot. Tell tell us about this. That's Kennebago, right? That's Kennebago. That's. Uh, Oh, late April, about ice out time. And uh, this is looking from our dock down towards West Kennebago Lake. And uh, 
It's a very, very special time of year. As you know, I saw this great. It's the beginning of everything, you know. What, what catches you so much about Kennebago and Rangeley? I grew up there, you know, and uh, a lot of it is pretty much the way it was 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. It's changing fast and hard, but uh, you can still find places there that are like it used to be. All right, give us that shot on the wall up there, the cabin, the one right up there behind it. Tell me about that one. This, this is a watercolor uh, that I just did. Uh, in September, I went on a five-day canoe trip down the headwaters of the Miramichi with <clears throat> Dave Clark, Bill Taylor, and DeCourcy uh, uh, Taylor. And this is a, a camp called McKeelbrook Camps. Have you ever been there? No, I have not. You heard of it? I've heard of it. That's yeah. it. And it's an incredible old log cabin, two old log cabins connected by a, a boardwalk and uh, uh, one cabin is the guide's camp with the stove. The other one is for the sports uh, and the drinking men or whoever's there. You know, I've never heard of such <laughs> a thing in my fishermen. <laughs> you had good fish in the Miramichi. Oh, fantastic. Yes. All right. Yeah, fantastic. Now that painting over Bill's head here, we've got to look at this. Bill, we include you right in with it. Tell us, tell us about that one. This, this is the, uh, uh, an evening on Kenny Bagel Lake. Um, as I said, the, the rain clouds are, are lifting and the sun is going down and uh, it's quiet. You know, you can hear loons and you know, that, that, I try to get that kind of an atmosphere. You know, you slip the canoe out and it's quiet and uh, the trout are rising and you just hit a ring with a dry fly and it's a uh, uh, favorite doesn't time that, of day. Doesn't that sound good with the ice though? <laughs> and all of us making the plans to go ice fishing? <laughs> Jane, where'd you create all your excitement this summer? Well, I uh, I caught a few fish on the Penobscot this summer, oh, yeah, this spring. Yeah, had a good time. Um, and I went to uh, Newfoundland this summer for several weeks, and uh, attended the uh, Atlantic Salmon Federation conclave with, that was held in um, Grand Falls, Newfoundland. Mm -hmm. Had a great time. Did you? What a wonderful bunch of people. You like the Newfies? Yes. I got screeched in. <laughs> you got screeched in. That's kind of an inside story, and we're not going to expand on screech. A no. Popular, popular refreshment up in Newfoundland right. after a day in the stream. No, did you hear any good Newfie stories? A lot, but I don't think I should repeat them. You don't think they no. go on public television? No, I don't think so. How big a fish do you catch up there? Well, on the, um, on the exploits, it was all grills. Um, and um, I. I didn't catch any. I, I didn't catch a fish while I was up there, but um, a number of people that um, that I knew up there caught several grills. Um, Arthur Taylor uh, caught several, and um, they were um, they were small. They were like five, six pounds. Uh, Newfoundland uh, Newfoundlanders pleased the way the salmon are coming back up there. Uh, they. Um, I know that's a very sensitive question. Yes. Yeah. They're. Um, they're really um, determined to to do all that they can to 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 get their salmon runs back because right now you 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 can't keep a salmon in Newfoundland it's grills only. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's uh, they've got a long long hard fight a ahead of them, but I think they're really determined people and um, and they've come a long way in the, in the last year, and um, I think this. This next few years are going to see big changes in Newfoundland. It's a it's a wonderful, wonderful province. It's a great place to go to fish. Um, you know, they 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 just really have a wonderful resource up there, and they just they just need to develop it. Mm -hmm. Bill, nobody's in a better position than you to give us an appraisal. Where do we stand with the Atlantic salmon on the North American continent right now? Are we making gains, or are we falling back, or are we holding our own? Well, I think we're, we're ready to make gains, bud, but, but uh, things are not good, and particularly they're not good out in the ocean. And Jane just mentioned uh, the situation in Newfoundland. As you probably know, this was the first year they imposed quotas on the commercial fishery in, in Newfoundland, and, and the fishermen didn't even make their quotas. Uh, in Greenland, uh, they didn't make their quotas either. Uh, the NASCO negotiations, North Atlantic Salmon Conservation Organization negotiations, are coming up in Edinburgh next spring, and we'll be dealing both with the uh, with the Greenland quotas and with what's going on in, in Newfoundland. I think we're ready to turn a corner, but I think there's got to be a recognition that, that uh, 
Uh, the commercial fishery has got to, to lay off these high value, I mean, the, the five pounders that are going to come back as 10 pounders uh, that have made it through the gauntlet of, of everything to get out there. They're very high value fish, and, and uh, the commercial fishermen uh, who are actually selling them at a loss, they're being subsidized by their governments, uh, are uh, raising the dickens with those fish. And, and uh, I think once that gets under control, I think that, that we'll be in a position to, to really see a, a good comeback on the Atlantic salmon. How do you go about containing the commercial fishing? Well, it's, a, it's not an easy problem because just for example, in, in Greenland there are 45,000 essentially Eskimos uh, who have always had a, a small uh, fishery for themselves. Uh, and beginning back in the 1970s, they tried to get into a, a market fishery. Uh, and uh, that's what's done the damage to our, uh, our fish. Those people, after all, can't be allowed to starve to death. But uh, I think that there are alternatives. Uh, there's a man named Ori Vigvison from Iceland who's working very hard on buying out both the Greenland quota and the, and the Faroe East quota, which is essentially a European fish. The, the Greenland fish are, are about half European and half North American. And uh, in order to buy that out, they're going to have to find some alternative for the people that live in Greenland to, to make a living. Sure, because and, there's uh, sustenance as far as they're concerned. That's right. right. And uh, I think that, that there are some, some uh, possibilities. I think perhaps sportsmen could go up there uh, to fish, to hunt reindeer. Uh, and uh, there are some, some things that can be done. Same in Newfoundland. Newfoundland is really looking at uh, changing over from a commercial fishery to a, a recreational fishery. And, and they have major plans uh, to do that over the next five to ten years. What do we do about the long liners? Well, the Russians and the Japanese? There's a, there is an illegal fishery uh, out in the North Atlantic. And the North Atlantic Salmon Conservation Organization, of which I happen to be one of the commissioners, right. uh, uh, is dealing with that. In fact, uh, the Polish government and the Panamanian government have now agreed not to be uh, licensing, giving flags to these, uh, these illegal uh, uh, trawlers and longliners. And uh, so I think that there's, that there's hope. It's a question of everybody understanding that there's a problem and everybody dealing with the problem. And of course, in the international arena, there's no judge. You have to, to work it all out by negotiation. And, and those negotiations are long and tedious and, and uh, challenging, but I, I do believe that they're going to succeed. Well, <coughs> what's the outlook in Maine? Well, the outlook in Maine is, is uh, as you know, the Downeast Rivers particularly have been hurting the, the last few years. And, Certainly and have. Nobody knows the, the reason, whether it's uh, too much commercial fishing uh, in the high seas, whether it's uh, the impact on the smolts as they leave the estuaries from cormorants and, and uh, seals. Nobody has a good handle on it. The, the National Marine Fisheries Service is funding a study in Washington County. It will center around the Narraguegas River, but uh, they hope to expand it to some of the other rivers, too, uh, to try to get a handle on whether the pesticides uh, from the blueberry industry and from forestry practices, that could be a potential problem. Uh, predation could be a problem. Habitat could be a problem. There are all kinds of things that, that uh, uh, need to be worked on. The, the Sea Run Salmon Commission has years and years and years worth of data. Uh, and one of the things that the National Marine Fishery Service is going to fund is, is a review and analysis of, of that 40 and 50 years worth of, of uh, data to see if they can, can uh, get some cause and effect relationships. You know, I remember when the Denny's was 100 fish river, Narraguegas 230, 240 fish. Uh, the Little Pleasant gave up uh, anywhere from 25 or 30. Uh, uh, the Machias uh, <coughs> was a model river. I can't believe that salmon have stopped coming into those rivers because there has to be some great reason, a monster reason, uh, to have the run stop entirely in all of those rivers. Well, and the same has been true in uh, other Bay of Fundy rivers in uh, uh, New Brunswick yeah. and Nova Scotia. Yeah. Uh, so it's not just a, an isolated situation that, that impacts the state of Maine. Yeah, but the little and Denny's has come to the point where they catch a fish, it's a story. That's right. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> and that's a tragedy. Yeah. And the, and the Narraguegas, you know, at one time, boy, it was the hallmark of Atlantic salmon fishing on, on the North American continent. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, my own belief is, is that we're going to have to go to catch and release 
until we turn the corner. And uh, uh, how long is it going to take to turn that corner? For all rivers? I would go, I would do that for Maine, for all mm -hmm. rivers, for yes. State. Right. And, uh, mm -hmm. uh, um, you know, it worked for the black ducks. Uh, everybody was saying, oh no, it isn't mm -hmm. the gunning that, that's reducing the black ducks. When they stopped gunning, the black ducks started coming back. Uh, so I think that, that um, we, can, we can restore the Atlantic salmon fishery, but it's going to take a few years to do it. Well, you, you guys have a, quite an affair coming up in Portland. <coughs> yes, but... Uh, uh, March 9th. Maine Council, Lang Salmon Federation, Portland Dinner. Chairman, Jane Cleaves and John Swan, in capable hands. Uh, well, perhaps, perhaps <laughs> not, but we'll see. <laughs> but we're, we have high hopes for... Uh, a successful fundraiser, proceeds of which will go to the Atlantic Salmon Federation and the Maine Council. And uh, we've uh, done a lot of preparation. We have, uh, uh, it'll be worth going to. It'll be worth going to. What's in the preparatory plans? Well, so far we have uh, uh, a wonderful dinner at the Marriott in South Portland. We have a uh, uh, afternoon reception with Gary Anderson the writer. Gary's going to be down. Good. Mm -hmm. and he's going to give us a slideshow and uh, a talk. Smoked salmon reception after that. Um, <coughs> um, Hoagie Carmichael will be our auctioneer, who's very good. And uh, we have a list of items that will uh, hopefully knock their socks off. Well, <laughs> knock my socks off. <laughs> Jane, Jane, is that, is that what that items? speech yep. is you have here? All no, right. this isn't. This is just a little bit of some of the things that we're going to be uh, having that night. We have uh, several trips, uh, fishing trips to Newfoundland, uh, on the Miramichi, to Labrador, on the Tabique, um, and then we have a lot of artwork. We have an original John Swan that we'll be auctioning off. Mm. Um, we have a sculpture. Um, by Larry, Larry DeCourcy Taylor, Taylor, yeah. DeCourcy Taylor. Mm -hmm. and we'll also have another sculpture by uh, Bill Page, um, and we'll have a lot of fishing tackle and equipment from uh, all over the state and New England. Tell them about the flies, Jan. Oh, yeah. Um, the what? The flies, yes. <laughs> oh, I thought you said the flies. <laughs> <right. Yeah. laughs> it's getting interesting. Yeah. No, um, we'll have a, uh, one of the Penobscot Masters. Oh, good. Uh, series flies with the box. It's um, it's a collection, a limited edition of 30 of Penobscot River flies mounted in. I a think this is the one box. Dorothy Douglas is putting together. Um, this is this is the one know. that that uh, uh, Galen Hashi and Bruce okay. Morris put right. together. All right, I have one of those. Yeah. Right. Good. Right. Good. We're going to be doing that. Good. So How much are tickets? A hundred dollars. A hundred dollars. Yes. One fifty a couple. Oh, one fifty a couple. Oh, 150 a couple. Well, that's well worth it. It'll be a wonderful evening. I'm sure it will. Afternoon and evening, it'll, mm. it'll be Any great. seminars beyond Gary Anderson? Uh, uh, no. No. No, not this year. We're, this is a trial run for us. So we're going to take it uh, a little bit at a time and see how it goes. Well, okay. I'm sure it will go. I think it's going to How's the well. interest thus far? Interest so far has been good. Um, our ticket chairman, Denny Denham, um, has told, told me last week he's already sold some tickets and had a lot of inquiries. Mm -hmm. So... Tickets are available right now and, and uh, through Denny. Good, good. Tell me about your fishing this fall. You were up to uh, on the Miramichi. <laughs> you were not going to let you. Yeah, 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 I'm not going to yeah. let you off the hook. Well, I can lie as well as anyway. Well, go ahead. <laughs> I, I don't know. I got a pretty good track record. Go ahead. <laughs> no, that's not true. No, I, I, as we were talking earlier, I, the best fishing that I had all year was uh, the last week of the season on the Miramichi. It was fantastic. It was just fantastic. We saw monstrous fish. Um, I had the, the largest fish on I've ever seen, I've ever seen in a river. It got it to the net twice and didn't quite make it into the net, but yeah. You know, well, yeah, so it goes. But the day after that, or the beat thirty pounds. Oh yeah, easily. Would it have beat thirty? Oh, easily, yeah. Uh, the day after that, in the same pool, uh, a fellow landed a forty-six pounder. Landed a 46? A 46-pounder. Who was that? Uh, uh, I don't know his name, but a guest at the lodge. Really? And uh, it was fantastic fishing. We saw fish like, you know, the fish that we saw leaping were, you know, 30, 30 pounders, mm -hmm. 35 pounders. Mm -hmm. And they were hitting and bumping and, and striking, and uh, it, was, it was great. Were, were you there the 1st of October through the 7th? Yeah. yeah. Those windy days. Yes. 
Did they take during those three windy days out of those four days or six days I was there? No, actually it was near the end of that week. Uh, the wind died down a bit and tr for us anyway, uh, the first one through the pool would, would hook a fish. Then nothing would happen until late in the afternoon. Then all of a sudden this run, would, this happened four days in a row, we'd see a run coming up the river, the fish leaping and leaping and everyone would say, here they come, here they come. And all of a sudden, boom, fish on, fish on, fish on. It was fantastic. What were you using for flies? Well, if I, if I, it's an invention of mine, and if I say that, you won't believe me, so I'll have to. Well, tell me about it's your invention. It's a little, little green, and, green and brown fly. A that green I tried. and brown. Green and brown and black. Well, and, uh, they loved it, so. Where I was, <laughs> well, I had a, I was there for a lie. Oh, that's good. <laughs> had an Icelandic fly. And we called it an Icelandic shrimp. Yeah. And I hadn't even heard of the yeah. thing. Well, after he got about eight fish in a row, I began to give him some attention. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> he gave me one, and um, they were taking that. They weren't yeah. taking the uh, green butt, they weren't taking yes. the red butt, mm -hmm. uh, and the bear hair, and so forth, but they would take that shrimp. shrimp. Uh, what so number hook? hook? What size hook? I had, hook? A, I had a six. You had a, a six? Six, six single. Well, they were taking small flies where I was, mm -hmm. eight and ten. Eight and ten, yeah. And that little Icelandic shrimp. Now, have you got a lie for us that you can add to this fire? <laughs> well, Bill caught a fish, like they said, on opening day, and then he gave me the fly, that fly. And uh, I proceeded, not the, not the same day, but a couple weeks later, caught, hooked two fish with the same fly, and then I lost a fish. What was the name of the fly? It was, it was a Casabon. Oh, the Casabon. Size yeah. four that I tied myself. Yeah, on a, on a Really? Yeah. yeah. Amazing though what, how many fish that Cosabon will take. Yeah. Great fly. But I, I, I hooked a fish on the pipeline and I was with um, Joe Floyd and the fish took off and my reel took off with the fish. The uh, spool came right out of the reel and started flopping around in the boat <laughs> <laughs> and I'm hanging onto the rod Definitely and Joe is. is screaming and uh, we finally managed to get the spool back into the reel reel it in, Joe released the fish, and then uh, the spool then fell off again and I lost the line and the, and the, and the fly. Every year we give a trophy <laughs> <laughs> uh, for the best story of the year and you've just I won the trophy. <laughs> you know, I, I wouldn't dare say that uh, folly equipment uh, fell into play there, but and I wouldn't even dare to mention that this girl works in the fishing, <laughs> fishing department of L.L.B. Company. I wouldn't do that. Huh? No, I wouldn't mention don't that. Don't do that. No. How about, that you, how about your fishing buddy? Yeah, you what's had, your best yeah. story this year? My best story was 29 pounder. Ooh. Gonna, you know, my best story has to be a seven pound, seven pound, five ounce brook trout I caught in Labrador. Oh, that's it. That's it. That was, I never great. caught one. I've already told that story. And uh, in fact, I had a letter from a friend of mine in Florida, and he said, I hope you've quit bragging about that damn fish of yours. <laughs> and uh, so anyway, I got the letter just a couple of days ago, uh, uh, Maggie McDonald, a friend of mine. And, uh, but that was it. I never caught a, tr a trout beyond five pounds, two ounces. And I did that with the late Al Nugent up in Allagash Stream uh, under the tramway bridge years ago. But I caught this, and I got this on the uh, Little Royal Wolf. Wow, that's Rosalind. great. That's yeah. a great that story. Was, uh, great fishing. That's a great thrill. Great, great personal thrill to get the thing in. Yeah. And Percy, if you're watching again tonight in Stevensville, Newfoundland, I'm still repeating that story. <laughs> Percy Payne was my guide. <laughs> what was your best catch, most exciting catch of the year, here or elsewhere? Well, it was on the St. Paul's River. St. Uh, Paul's. On, right, on the North Shore in Quebec. Uh, I had a... Uh, uh, in fact, I raised two fish at the same time. Uh, one was a salmon, one was a grills, and, and I've written an article for the Atlantic Salmon Journal about it. Uh, and I got the salmon, and uh, lovely fish, about 15 pounds. And uh, uh, I knew I didn't, you know, I, when you had that salmon coming, he came three times before he took, and, but uh, on, the, on the back of the swing, there's this little grills would come to it too, and I knew if I hooked the grills, I'd lose the salmon, or put him down. Uh, so. Uh, but we got him. We got the salmon hmm. and uh, lovely fish. What'd you get? Pounds. What'd you use for fly up there? Bill? I had a little tiny uh, brown buck bug with a green butt on it. Little tiny tied little by Ted buck Godfrey. Bug. Yeah, about size twelve, double, and uh, and on a on a seven and a half, uh, a nine and a half foot seven weight rod with a twelve foot leader. Uh, we were really using small flies. 
No wind blowing that day when you were Not throwing that line. Not much wind blowing that day, that's right. <laughs> Boy, that's great. Do you tie flies, John? Yes, I do. Do you? Yeah. What's your favorite fly? I really like tying uh, streamers and Rainsley streamers do and you? bucktails and things like that. Do you like to troll streamers? Uh, uh, no, I, I like to cast them in rivers, like the Kennebago River or things like that. I, I What's like your favorite them? fly among the streamers? Edson Tiger. The Edson Tiger? Lake Tiger, yeah. That's the very, I think that's the very best. I thought you were going to tell me Black Ghost. That's close, that's close, but, uh, but uh, the Edson Tiger is the best. Yeah. A great fly yeah. for Kennebago. Sure is, yeah. I mean, boy, when that turns and that black goes, what's your favorite yeah. fly? Well, I am um, i don't have a particular favorite right now, but I'm um, tying uh, Thunder and Lightnings right now on my, my vice. I'm uh, going to be doing a lot of tying this, this winter. i got to tie some flies for this banquet. That's great, Victor Peavy. Thunder and lightning, mm -hmm. huh? Mm -hmm. Boy, oh boy. Well, like I said at the outset, we have a full canoe here tonight, and for date purposes, March 9th, and this is going to be the main council of Atlantic Salmon Federation dinner to be held in Portland, to be held at the Marriott, and uh, that's on Sable Oaks Drive at South Portland, and it's just a great place to go. Now, tickets are still, uh, now available. And there you may get tickets by contacting Denny Denham, who is the ticket chairman, post office box 1020, Gray, Maine, or you may telephone him, telephone him at 772-2331. I'll give you that phone number again, 772-2331. Now this is all to support the main council, the Atlantic Salmon Federation, and uh, as most of you, I imagine, by now realize that uh, the Maine Federation is made up of uh, a good number of fishermen, the full length and breadth of Maine. They are kind of the watchdogs of Atlantic salmon fishing, and that's important since we are the only state in the lower 48 with good runs of Atlantic salmon. It was a great year in Maine this year in truth. Fishing was early. For example, the Penobscot, more than 3,000 fish were taken in the trap and perhaps somewhere close to a thousand fish taken on the rod. So it was not a bad year, it was a good year. Water conditions were not the best at all times. Uh, May and June they were excellent and then the warm weather come in and boy that put the fish down. But that's the nature of the creature. John Swan's awful nice to meet you. We've never met before and again I'm a fan of yours. Uh, I'm a fan of you too, but thank well, you. Thank you. But Jane, good to see you again. Yeah. I hope you have better equipment the next time that you get in a boat. <laughs> <laughs> and continue to do the great work that you do, Bill, for the Atlantic Salmon. Thank you, bud. Good night, everyone. Come join my happy song.